It's the Phoenix, Arizona weather discussion for Thursday, October 6th. I'm Michael Groff. Another day of below normal temperatures here in the valley before we have to start talking about some rain chances for this weekend. Then the possibility of a heat wave for next week. Also an update on Hurricane Matthew. Lots going on in the weather world. Let's get out there and take a look at it this morning. High clouds as the sun rises over the valley. 68 degrees at Sky Harbor right now. Dew point at 45. Relative humidity 43%. Winds are light and the barometer is rising. Around the metro area this morning, temperatures mainly in the upper 50s to upper 60s. Satellite shows clouds streaming into far southern Arizona ahead of an upper level trough, a little shortwave feature that will be coming in here this weekend. We'll talk about that momentarily. On the watch warning map, we have numerous frost and freeze advisories from eastern Colorado extending north into the Dakotas. A dense fog advisory for a good part of lower Michigan, as well as sections of Pennsylvania, Maryland, and Virginia. Hurricane warnings from West Palm Beach up to Brunswick, Georgia. Hurricane watches extend north toward Charleston. A tropical storm warning for Miami today. And tropical storm watches swing all the way around to the west coast of Florida, including the Tampa Bay area. All right, very active day convectively across the nation's heartland at enhanced risk of severe weather from about Topeka, Kansas to Des Moines. A slight risk surrounding that from the Texas Panhandle all the way up into eastern Iowa. And then a marginal risk goes further to the northeast into Wisconsin today. And the big story in the weather world, still Hurricane Matthew, packing maximum sustained winds of 125 miles per hour, making it a potent Category 3. The outer bands of this storm will start to affect South Florida by mid to late morning, but then conditions will really deteriorate rapidly as we go through the afternoon and evening hours. Matthew should be somewhere near West Palm Beach by 2 a.m. Eastern Time, Friday morning, and right along the immediate coast. That's where you're going to feel the full effects of this storm. Hurricane force winds, storm surge, beach erosion, flooding rains. But you go inland at all, if you're on the, the left side of this, the west side of this hurricane, that is the weaker side. So winds will be much less, even uh, 40 miles away from the center of this storm. And you get over toward Tampa Bay, probably not going to see much at all. Maybe a, a half inch of rain, some breezy conditions, and that's about it. Occasional squalls, but nothing too bad on the east coast of Florida. Again, even up toward Orlando, probably only talking two to three inches of rain, whereas places like Melbourne... And West Palm Beach see six to eight, if not more, inches of rain and winds that could easily gust in excess of 90 to 100 miles per hour. That's why the track of this storm, very important, a, a shift in direction of even 10 or 20, 30 miles from the center of this storm. And you're talking about much different weather conditions. So we'll watch that very carefully as we go through the rest of the day today and tomorrow. Then it hugs the coast, goes up to east of Jacksonville by Saturday morning, then turning, uh, making that hard right turn just south of Charleston. The GFS 21-member ensemble, yeah, this thing does the loop. Now, the blue line there, that is the deterministic run of the GFS, and that takes it down into the Bay of Campeche, ultimately. Loops it all the way back around, takes a second shot at South Florida. Obviously, is a much weaker system, if that were to be correct, but almost all all of the models do some type of loop with this system uh, through the next five to seven days or so. All right, let's get into the models. Let's talk about our weather here just a bit. This is the latest, the O6Z GFS, valid at 5 p.m. Mountain Standard Time today. Still have the big cold trough in the west. They have had significant snow in Saskatchewan and portions of western Manitoba, as well as the northern Rockies of Montana and Wyoming. Around here, just pleasant conditions. Another dry day. High temps getting into the mid to upper 80s. There will be a few high clouds around, but overall, not bad. Another pleasant night tonight, but then tomorrow, start to notice the winds aloft are veering toward the south and southeast. As that happens, moisture will start to be imported into the state. It'll be mainly dry around here, but clouds on the increase. Highs will also warm with some warm air advection from the south. We'll get into the low, possibly the middle 90s tomorrow. Not going to call for any rain chances here yet. Those will be reserved till about tomorrow night. But in the southeast parts of Arizona, certainly could see some isolated showers and thunderstorms tomorrow afternoon. Saturday, we start to really increase the clouds. We'll see some widely scattered showers and thunderstorms develop. 
Now, the models have been a little inconsistent on this. Uh, some of the models, like the NAM, really showing a, a trend toward a wetter solution. More moisture coming in here. Uh, the GFS has been a little bit back and forth on this. This run shows a little bit less moisture, but still precipitable water values above 1.1 inches around here. And with some decent CAPE, although not quite as robust as what was being shown yesterday. But again, I remind you, some of the other models are showing significantly more moisture, and that could impact how much rain we get out of all of this. But for now, we'll call it 30% chances of showers, maybe a thunderstorm. Highs will cool off a bit, mid to upper 80s for Saturday. On Sunday, that little short wave trough moves off to the east, and conditions will start to dry out under westerly flow. We'll have a mostly sunny day. Highs getting back up into the low 90s. Any chances of rain far east Arizona or over into New Mexico. How much rain are we going to get out of this this weekend? Well, not a whole lot, uh, if this is to be believed. But again, things can change, and the wetter solutions of these wetter models are, are definitely something to consider. For right now, though, we'll probably at most call about a tenth of an inch here in the metro area from all of this. In some places, as you know, we'll get less. An isolated spot or two will see far more. The better chances are still going to be in the mountains north and east of Phoenix. So we get into Monday. Again, dry westerly flow around here. Here's some energy that will be passing us by uh, to the north Monday and Tuesday. And that could be impetus for a few showers up uh, along the Arizona-Utah border. But around here, it's still going to be dry. Highs Monday and Tuesday, getting into the middle 90s again. Wednesday could also see temps in the mid-90s, maybe even pushing toward the upper 90s. I know we don't want to hear that. Certainly don't want to think about temps getting back toward the century mark, but that is definitely a possibility as we go through time. All right, and here we go toward a week from today. This is Thursday, October the 13th. And, you know, heights around 588 or so around here at 500 millibars, and that represents about the 90th percentile for this time of year, which means temperatures are going to be very warm. Mid to upper 90s potentially by late next week. There are some models that think we'll be above 100 degrees. We'll be getting close to record territory. Not sure if I'm ready to go that far yet, but definitely a warm week ahead. Temperatures above normal next week. Uh, this is Friday, the 14th of October. Still ridging here over the southwest, be it broad and flat. It's still ridging nonetheless. And uh, look at those negative height anomalies, though up uh, off the coast of British Columbia and up toward the Gulf of Alaska. Very impressive. Then this is the end of the forecast period, Saturday, October 15th. And if this is right, we're dry and we're very warm in this pattern. Again, we'll have highs easily into the mid-90s, maybe warmer. Some of the deserts of southeast California will most certainly touch 100 degrees if this verifies. Meanwhile, very cold temperatures in the upper Midwest, the northern plains, and that's the kind of pattern that we have. The southern tier states stay warm and dry. The northern tier states probably see uh, their first good round of snowfall if this pans out. Temperatures through the period, again, not sure if we're going to make 93 on Saturday. That just kind of depends on how much cloud cover we get. But the idea here is Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, we're going to really warm it up. Could even be warmer than this. This is the ensemble. Some of the individual members have us climbing to near 100 as we go through next week. That about wraps it up for the Phoenix, Arizona weather discussion for today. Our next video comes your way tomorrow morning. Thank you so much for watching. Really do appreciate it. Have a great Thursday.